All right, my children, so I'm going to blow through this as fast as I can because the last recording <laughs> was giving me a bunch of problems. So, yeah, um, what I'm going to do in this tutorial is just kind of finish up the uh, character or the first-person controller. We're going to add animations to our player here. That way they can uh, crouch up and down, lean. Um, they can mantle up here. As you can see here, they look down just a little bit. And then on top of that, I also am going to show you how to do a very simple uh, wall run. So, whoops, that was a terrible demonstration. Let's try that again. There we go. So yeah, we're going to show you how to do all that today. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is um, in your player, you're going to add an animation player. And you're going to add an animation tree. Now the animation tree here should give you an error. Let me see here, just a quickly. So yeah, the, so just get yourself an animation player and add an animation tree. And as you see here, there's an error here. All it needs is, um, needs a root. So what the one that we're gonna be using is the um, new animation node state machine. And then over here, it's gonna need an animation player, which we have right here. So just make sure that you got those things set up. Just going to delete this one because we don't need it. And then the animation player, all it's going to do is going to give us a way to store our animations. Now, as you can see here, I already have animations. This is from the earlier recording that got bugged up. So, uh, yeah, I'm just going to quickly show you how this was done. So once you have yourself an animation player, um, it's going to have, it should be empty. So actually, let's just do a new animation here. That way I can show you exactly how I did this. So you can have this here. Um, all you're going to do is add a track, go to property, choose what you want to manipulate. In our case, it's going to be the camera 3D. Then it's going to ask you what property you want. I need position. And a, I want to move the camera. Jesus Christ. <sighs> Say I want it to move the camera to... Oh, I know what the problem is. Um, if you're going to use the animation tree, make sure it's uh, disabled in the settings here. Uh, otherwise, you're not going to be able to manipulate anything. Okay. Let's try this again. New animation. Add track property. We want this camera. We want the position. And then we're going to click on this here. You got all the nice little keyframes. And then we can just kind of do whatever it is that we want to do. And then you can just click on this and you'll see here it added this and then if you want to add like um, something that's um, let's say you want to add rotation or scale even though you don't have a track for it if you just click if you just manipulate it and then click on the key it'll just say if you would like to create a new track and then you can and that's pretty much all I did for all of these here so for like the lean here um, I just manipulated the X and the Z the X position and the Z rotation. Uh, same thing with the right, I just did in the opposite direction. Um, the mantle uh, as well, as you can see here. On these sides, these keyframes or the um, values of the position and rotation are changing. And the same goes for the crouch and standing. So you should definitely have a stand idle and you should have a crouch idle. Those, If you don't do anything else, just do those two at least, which are very easy. Um, the crouch idle is just going to be its default position where it's at right now, which should be all zeroed out. And then you're just going to bring it down to about halfway to your uh, capsule here. And then you're going to store those values as well. And then the standing idle is literally just a blank right through. Okay. Okay, well, something I forgot to mention while I was explaining the animations. Uh, or blowing through the animations is the speed on which they are um, That they're gonna play back at so if you can see here There's a little tiny clock over here and it even says here the animation length in seconds So if you want an animation that's faster because it's too slow then you would do by default It's one but if you need it slower than that then you can just do like 0.5 Which is about half the speed or half the duration. So it's it'll be double the speed um, you can do that for pretty much everything here. Um, as you can see here, like for the crouching animation, I just picked 0.2 because I needed it to be really fast. Um, standing didn't need it because it's, it's just um, it's just there to reset the animations. And then mantle, 
is at 0.7 so and then the leans are both at 0.5 so yeah that's that's just something I needed to add here all right back to whatever the hell I was saying next up we're gonna go into our code our script here so in order for the animation player to work see, or the animation tree to work we need to activate it so first thing we're gonna do is grab a variable or create a variable and then we're just gonna grab that um, that node here so we've got get node animation tree and then there is a function within this animation tree called uh, parameters and playback and all that's going to do is just going to look through this animation tree and get all of our animations that we set up here don't worry i'm going to show you exactly how to do this um, and then down here in the ready function we just need to make sure that um, the act that the node is is activated otherwise you won't be able to grab any of those animations later down the line okay so now let's do the animation tree Actually, let me just add one. That way we have a fresh a fresh start. Let's add all this stuff. And then we're going to add this stuff here. Okay. So when you open this up and you have all this stuff, it should be empty. And all you're going to want to do is make sure that you have um, your animation set up from the player, the animation player here. This has to be um, filled in. And then when you have that filled in, you'll have this option here, Add Animations, and it's going to grab one of our animations. So what we want to do is have our standing animation as essentially the root of all our animations, and then it's just going to kind of fan out, as you can see here, to all the other animations here. Now, the best way I can describe this is think of this like a city map. These um, little animations are going to be places that you want to go. And then this right here, this little icon, allows us to connect these here. And these are going to be essentially streets. So, um, and these little streets are going to be able to transition from one animation to the next smoothly. So if there's no, um, if there's no uh, transition here or there's no street, um, you can't get to this animation. So, for example, standing and crouch will never transition to each other because there's no street. Or connection so let's just add these back and then what you're going to want to do here is click on to this little bar or the little street and then you're going to go up to the x fade time and you're going to put point 0.2 this is um the length of time that it's going to take for it to transition from this state to this state and then here on the switch you're going to want it to be immediate and all that means is that the second we call it, or the moment we call it, it activates it immediately. And then down here, you don't want auto, you want enabled. And all this means is that um, whenever we're in a state, we, we're allowing ourselves to transition to that state. If we have it set on auto, it's just going to instantly, the second you hit one of these states, it's going to change it to the next one. So you don't want that. All right, and then you're going to do the same thing for the other one, but going in the other direction, same thing to keep it immediate and then enable. Um, and then you're just going to do that for the rest of them. So let's say you had, you know, your lean and your your mantle and all that other good stuff. And you would do the exact same thing. But again, they all are going to, whoops, they're all going to connect to, they're all going to connect to the stand, the stand idle. Because that's going to be the, like I said, the, def the default. Now, something I should mention, um, one of the reasons why the, an the last recording got screwed up is because there's a, I think there's a bug with the animation tree here. Um, it was messing up all my animations for whatever reason. So all I did was I just deleted it and re-added it, same settings, same everything, and it just worked. So I don't know what the issue was with that. I didn't change any of my code, didn't change any of the settings um, from that I used before, and the animations work now. So, don't know. Uh, just something to keep in mind if your animations get screwed up um, later on down the line just delete it and re-add it okay now um, now that we have uh, this set up a hundred percent the next thing we're gonna need to do is whoops is in the ready function we need to make sure that we have an animation already called um, otherwise it's it's gonna the very first animation that you do is just gonna jump because it doesn't know where to start so this is exactly what we're doing. We're telling it what starting point we have. So we're just going to grab the animation tree. 
and then in order to call an animation we had to do travel so um, if you're used to using the animation player you usually put, probably put play but um, for this we need travel so and then we're gonna have the name of our animation then after that we are going to have to do a couple of inputs okay let's go to our inputs and all I did was put a if statement and saying if we're not crouching meaning we're standing then we are allowed to, or we're gonna allow ourselves to use our lean so all I did was if event is action pressed lean left then we're gonna go to our animation tree we're gonna find we're gonna, go to our tree, we're gonna find the lean left and then we're gonna play it and then if we ever release this button then we're just gonna go back to our our standing idle so essentially what we're doing is if I press the lean key um, it's gonna go up to the lean and it's just gonna stay there until I let go and then when I let go it's gonna right back down to the standing animation and as you can see here now obviously that looks like absolute garbage but you can tweak it to your heart's content but as you can see here if I press the link uh, left key I lean to the left and then if I let it go it goes back to the original state and you can do that for the rest of them as well so here is just the lean right does the exact same thing uh, only in the opposite direction and then I create it let's get rid of this here I think I created this here crouch stand animation and all I did for this was another boolean and this just says if I'm crouching then transition to me excuse me yeah if I'm crouching transition me to the stand and if I'm standing transition me to the crouch so that's what that's doing so as you can see here if I'm already standing now I go and crouch and now from crouch I can go to stand that's all that's doing um, this was just to keep it um, nice and neat that's why I have a function instead of just making it um, inside there and then finally um, something that I need to do before I do the mantling system why is this thing so freaking high up but it's I think it's in the control loop ah here we are so here I'm just going to transition um, to the stand state if we ever move um, you can probably put a head bob in here um, I believe that's what I did for this one here yeah so I just made a head bob for the other character um, but for this one just to keep it simple I just made go back to the standing and the reason I did this is to make sure that the animation um, resets so when you hit the animation key like so um, it it stays in that last um, animation that's being played so that it, it stays in that state indefinitely until a new state takes its place so that's all that's doing is just making sure that this here um, resets it back to the root and the reason why I did that is for when we do the mantling which right here animation we just added it to our little um, jump or whatever the hell um, this allows us to mantle more than just once so if I did not have that here you'll see here I'll be able to mantle once Okay, do it again. You can see here she looks down or he looks down a little bit before they pick themselves up. That's all I did for that. Um, but if I didn't have that, um, it would only do it that one time and then it would never do it again. So that's all that's doing. Okay, now for the wall run. This is actually super simple. Um, I'm sure you can do a better way than that, but the way that I'm going to do it, but um, this was just a very quick and dirty way to do it. So the first thing I did was I created two more um, raycasts. Now, if you remember the last video, we had raycast for our head, uh, but this time we are going to do just for the left and the right. So I think you can see where we're going with this. I just grabbed the nodes. Um, excuse me. I just grabbed the nodes and just said if they were colliding, then it's just going to change my gravity here. Now I have a variable called can. Uh, wall run and all this is checking all this is checking right here is I have a timer where's the timer at yeah so I have a variable for the timer this thing is gonna count down whenever we're running and moving so what this timer is doing is just to make sure that if the player is ever up against the wall 
they don't they're not able to wall run unless they run first so as you can see here i'm just going to go up to this wall here until i actually build up some speed and that's all that timer is doing as you can see I can, now i can run just a little bit up the wall and catch onto these ledges so that's all that's for um, that's what this timer is doing and then here if the wall timer is ever less than zero or less than or equal to zero um, that means that we've ran long enough then we're going to switch over our state to can run it is equal to true and then if we either aren't moving or if this timer is higher than than zero then we can't run on the wall that's all that's doing and i think that's about it I don't th all right so i just noticed that i completely forgot to explain exactly what this code is doing <laughs> so um i think it's obvious what the code is doing it's just taking our gravity and it's just cutting it in half essentially um this will give us the uh player the ability to run on walls massive quotation marks um all it's really doing is just cutting the gravity from our our jump so when we jump we or when we are wall running because our gravity is less than um, what it normally is, um, it's giving the illusion that we're running on the wall, even though what's actually happening is that um, because we're touching the wall, our gravity is just less, so we slide down much slower. That's that's essentially what's happening with this. Thought I should just add that in. Completely missed it. Um, so yeah, let me just finish this off. Um, I think there was anything else, right? Right. Yeah, I think that does that. So yeah, and then this um, obviously is the other side of this. And gravity will return. Where do I set, where did I reset the gravity? Okay. Okay, so I was correct. The uh, mantle state is actually resetting the gravity for us, so we don't have to uh, worry about that. Okay, so yeah, I think that's super, super simple. Um, I don't think maybe maybe this needed a better explanation but I think you guys get the idea uh, from the last video so I don't I'm not gonna spend too much time on it what am I doing on time here 20 minutes okay I think that's that's long enough um, if you have any trouble I guess just leave me a comment um, I think this was pretty straight forward to be perfectly honest all right, my children, thank you so much for watching. Hope you learned something. And until next time, farewell.